Hello everybody, welcome back to Five Field Junction. Today I've got another DCC fitting video for you. Um, if you've been watching the channel recently, you will know that we, um, well, that I recently did, did a review on the Backman uh, Codex Goods class, uh, which is what we've got in front of us here. Um, but today's video is going to be how to fit a decoder into one of these locomotives. Um, because this model is quite old, um, it's quite outdated, um, certainly by modern standards. Um, it's not DCC ready, so converting it to DCC uh, for some people uh, may be quite difficult, um, or even to us, even for people that already have uh, some already have some uh, knowledge and uh, some skill on converting locos to DCC um, that aren't DCC ready. Um, this one could even still be a little bit difficult, and this is certainly going to be one of the slightly more interesting ones that I've done as well. Um, obviously, with most locos, usually even if they're not DCC ready. Usually, um, even in size, there's still, um, most of the time, plenty of room inside the locomotive um, for a decoder. However, with this loco, because of the basically the way it is and the way Batman have um, put the mechanism in it, um, it's not quite as easy as some other locomotives. <coughs> um, basically, with this loco, is that the motor takes up basically the entire space that has been made inside the loco, basically for the mechanism. Um, what we'll do quickly is we'll put the tender to one side um, because we don't need that for the moment and I'll quickly just take the body off and so we can quickly have a look inside before we start um, doing any of the major work. Uh, now to remove the body um, on these locomotives it is nice and easy. Now there are three screws along the bottom um, if I just hold the loco up you can see that there are three screws along the bottom however to get the body off you only need to take out the front screw here so if we just put in a Phillips head screwdriver, undo the screw, and there we go. Let's take that out, put that to one side, and then the body shell should come off nice and easily. There we go. And off it comes. And there we are. Now the cab detail piece um, is a separate piece from the actual cab. It is made of metal. Um, which helps with the loco's weight a bit, which is quite nice. Um, now that is screwed on, so actually we might as well take that off as well, just get it out of the way. Let's take out the back screw. And there we go. Yeah, there we are, that comes off. And we'll just get rid of that screw as well. There we go, put that to one side. And then we can see how she's laid out inside. And as we can see, it is a very basic mechanism inside. So we can see we've got the two wires are coming there from the pickup plate underneath and they literally just go straight onto the motor and that's it so there's no there's not even a capacitor or anything on this loco which is uh, quite surprising to be honest and um, you would think on a loco like this that they would install a capacitor on there uh, but maybe again with the very limited space inside maybe there just wasn't room for one or something and um, that's um oh well <laughs> i guess we'll have to deal with it that way um, obviously converting it to DCC anyway, we don't need a capacitor, so it's good that there isn't one um, in this case because we don't need it. Um, obviously if we're running it on analog, then it's probably trying to, it's quite nice to have one. Um, you could try and put one on if you want to, um, but we're certainly not going to need it for this. Um, now the motor is literally, obviously it's a typical sort of Batman can motor, and it literally just goes straight down the worm gear, it literally touches straight onto the uh, driving gear um, on the axle. I'm pretty sure and that's it. And there might be a gear between um, the motor and the driving axle, um, but that is pretty much it. It's very, very basic uh, mechanism. No flywheel or anything. Um, very, very bare bones. And now, obviously, one of the main gripes with this locomotive is that, as I mentioned earlier, the motor does take up all of the space inside the body shell. If I just uh, put the cab detail piece uh, back in where it needs to go, it should just slot back in quite nicely. There we are. And we can see that inside the body there, the motor literally does take up that entire space. There is no room in there whatsoever. And um, you may think um, that you could try and maybe mill out the smoke box um, or, or the boiler area slightly. Um, now, it is a possibility. However, it's going to be very difficult because inside the um, smoke box and the boiler, um, it's just solid metal. There's a solid metal weight um inside the smoke box and the boiler and everything which is what give helps give that loco give this loco um gives it a lot of weight and helps uh, give it traction so <laughs> milling it out it will be very very difficult um and to be honest getting that weight out is going to be nigh on impossible uh, really um not without actually cutting the body shell and everything which i don't really want to do so really the only 
option with this loco is obviously you can still wire up the decoder, wire up the decoder and everything and it will work however as for actually putting the decoder somewhere the decoder is going to have to go inside the tender which means running the obviously we're going to have to put the decoder inside the tender we are also going to have to uh, drill a few holes because there isn't really any holes um, at the moment um, in the loco for any of the wires to go so what we're going to have to do is put the decoder in the tender we're going to have to drill a hole in the bottom of the tender near the front somewhere to thread those wires through and then we're going to also um, most likely have to drill we're going to have to drill a hole or a couple of small holes somewhere in the base keeper plate so we then can, can then thread the wires through there and then they can come up uh, through this gap here where the current pickup wires come through and by saying that's the pickup wires when you come through there because they're obviously be underneath but the motor wires can then come up through there and then go onto the motor and now very quickly before we continue further um, what i'll do is i'll quickly take the base keeper plate off and everything um, and i'll take the tender body off as well and we can see a bit more inside so we can see a bit more basically how we're going to wire the loco up and where we're going to put everything okay right so before we continue any further we'll quickly dismantle her a little bit more so we can see how we're going to wire her up and where everything's going to go so we'll put the tender uh, just to one side for the moment and we'll start off with the locomotive so first of all we need to take off the base keeper plate now we've already taken out the other two screws obviously to get the body and everything off so we just need to take out the center screw now and that will then give us access to the pickups so we'll just take out that center screw oh come on nearly there there we go put that to one side and then we can ease up the base keeper plate Try and stretch out those wires a bit, give it a bit more play. There we go. Try to stop the wheels from going everywhere. They're trying to. There we go. That should be fine. So we can now see what she's like inside. So we can see the two wires there soldered onto the base key plate. If I try and hold that up a bit better for you. A bit hard to film but hopefully you can see that there where the two wires where they solder on and obviously then we've got the pickups and everything uh, coming off that and obviously running the entire length of the base keeper plates and now to obviously DCC this unit we obviously need to interrupt the signal between the power from the track and the motor so what we're going to do is we're going to basically remove these two wires fully and then what we'll do is then with the chip, the chip we're going to be using um, is just a standard 8-pin uh, uh, laser DCC decoder. We'll remove the 8-pin plug because we're not going to need that. And what we shall do is where the red wire uh, currently goes on the base keeper plate, uh, the red wire from the decoder will go onto there. And then the black wire uh, that's currently on there the black wire from the decoder will go onto that and that will then give the um, that will give the decoder power and then on the in terms of the motor what we'll do is where the red wire currently goes on the motor the orange wire from the decoder will go onto there and then the black wire that's currently going to the decoder that will come off and the grey wire from the decoder will then go onto there and that'll be it that will then be the decoder that will be the decoder wired up um, all of the electrics wired up as they should be um, obviously, whilst doing that, we need to ensure that the, all of the wires are threaded through um, all of the relevant holes uh, that we create and to ensure that obviously everything runs from the tender into the loco fine. So we just, we just put the loco to one side now and we'll go to the tender. Now to remove the tender body, it's this front screw uh, that's just uh, inside here, just in front of the uh, wheels. And then the back screw here, just in front of where the coupling is down in there. So if we take out those two, should be nice and easy. That's one. And then do the back one. There we are, that's that. Get rid of that, we'll put the screwdriver to one side. And then the tender body comes off nice and easily. So we can see inside we've got some weights inside of the tender. Uh, we'll leave those in there because obviously we don't want the tender to be too light because otherwise it'll end up derailing, derailing quite easily. 
Uh, the tender body we won't need to do anything with, so we can put that to one side so we can grab that back at the end. Uh, so at the moment, there isn't really anywhere um, on the tender for the wires to uh, go through. Uh, we can't use this hole here because that's where the screw goes through. So what we will likely do is I'll drill a hole somewhere um, around the front here, somewhere around next to that hole, uh, somewhere in the center. And then what I can do is I can then thread the decoder wires through that hole that I create. And then I'll likely drill um, either another big hole or I'll do a couple of small holes somewhere in the back of the base keeper plate there. We can then thread through our wires there we can solder um, the pickup wires onto the base keeper plate uh, directly in there. And then the motor wires, they can then be threaded up through that hole in the chassis there and soldered onto the motor. So hopefully um, <laughs> you get an idea of everything we need to do. Certainly a bit more interesting, a bit more thinking that needs to be done uh, compared to a lot of other locomotives. Um, but uh, certainly not the hardest loco in the world, I think, to do. Uh, if it was a split chassis loco, um, like a lot of um, older Batman Locos, uh, basically the generation of Locos that came before this one. Um, and apparently they are a massive headache uh, to DCC because you pretty much have to dismantle everything uh, to uh, basically start doing it and you have to insulate various bits and God, it ends up being a massive headache. Um, but certainly with this one, still a bit of modification needs to be done, but certainly not the hardest. So I think what we can do now is we'll start uh, preparing her. I'll drill those holes quickly then we'll come back um, I'll show you where I've drilled them so you can get an idea of where to put them. Obviously, you don't have to put them exactly where I've done them, um, but um, I suppose it'll probably make it a bit easier. I don't want to start drilling holes where you don't need to and whatever. But anyway, I'll drill those holes and I'll come back and we can carry on. Okay, so here we are. It's all looking a bit of a mess at the moment, but I'm sure, trust me, it'll make sense and we can get it back together in a moment. So I've done drilling, I've drilled all the holes that we need to. So in the tender, I've drilled a nice big hole uh, just at the front of the chassis there, as we can see. And now if you do do this, just be a bit careful because the small piece of detail uh, that's just at the front here, you can see uh, the two holes that it sort of slots into at the top there, hopefully. Um, now we do need it um, because it helps uh, when the tender is coupled to the loco, it stops the uh, basically the tender connection uh, moving back and forth a bit. It just helps keep it in place. Um, so you do need that piece of detail. Why? Uh, I don't know why Batman didn't uh, actually mould that uh, onto the chassis when they built the model. I don't know why they've done it as a separate piece. Um, it's not fixed on very well, so I've super glued it on uh, to hold it in place um, because it does come off um, when you drill, try and drill the hole. Um, so it's been glued on. It's definitely not going to come off again now um, and the hole's been drilled. Uh, and it, I'm sure it'd be perfectly big enough uh, to thread those wires through. And then on the base keeper plate, um, I've already removed... Uh, the two wires uh, just to get them out of the way so, uh, so that for a start um, I could have the base keeper plate um, as a separate piece away from the chassis um, and I suppose obviously it needs to be done anyway so I thought I might as well do it. <coughs> uh, so as we can see here at the back of the base keeper plate I drilled uh, two small holes um, to drill these I've just used uh, my little handheld drill um, to do the one on the tender chassis I did use uh, my Dremel just, uh, so it'll be a bit easier and obviously the plastic on here is a bit thicker as well, um, so it'd be a bit quicker. Um, and because the holes on, on here need to be quite small, um, I use my handheld one, um, obviously to get them a bit more accurate. Um, and obviously um, the plastic is quite thin as well, so it doesn't take incredibly long to drill, though, drill those either. So with all of that done, all that we need to do now um, is just basically to wire her up. Um, so I've already prepped the decoder. I have removed um, the eight pin, uh, eight pin plug. I actually desoldered um, the four wires that we need off the plug so that I didn't have to bother stripping them. Um, but the other four function wires that we don't need, I just cut those off. Then I've just wrapped them in a piece of electrical tape just to hold them out of the way. And obviously to ensure that the ends of those wires don't touch anything um, because we don't want to end up blowing the decoder. Um, so all we need to do now is just wire her up. So obviously the decoder, um, I'll just secure in place on top of these weights here. I can then thread uh, the wires through this hole. They can then go through the wire, go through the two holes on the back of the base keeper plate, and then we can wire everything up. So I'll go away now. Um, you'll see me um, wire it all up, um, but it will be sped up, so I don't want it to go on for absolutely ages. But I promise, once I've wired it all up, I'll then show you uh, what I've done, so you can see how it needs, to, see how it needs to go. And then we can put the loco back together fully and give her a test. So I'll see you in a moment once the loco is all wired up. Okay, 
Okay, so here we are. So the loco's all been wired up. Um, everything's been secured down. It's not quite 100% um, done yet um, because once we've got the body back on and everything, I'll need to make sure that these wires um, are at a suitable length and they can't move about too much. Um, but they should uh, be okay uh, for the most part for now, for the moment. Um, so as you can see, we've got the chip inside the tender and the wires that we don't need, um, as I did earlier, obviously have been wrapped up and then I've secured them down in place with a little bit of blue tack. Um, usually I would use black tack for something like this, um, but um, I, it was e easier to um, grab this because it's just literally bulb there. Um, I have got some spare black tack, um, but I'm running quite low on it, so I'm going to try and save that for the moment. Uh, for things that I, that I absolutely need. Um, the blue tech will be fine here because it's not really close to anything um, that's going to cause it to cause any damage or anything so that'll be perfectly fine. Then we can see we've got the four relevant coloured wires coming off going into uh, well going down through that hole in the tender that we drilled earlier then going through those back holes on the basic keeper plate there then the two pickup wires have been soldered on uh, to the pickup uh, pickup strips on the basic keeper plate underneath then we can see the two motor wires going in and then coming up through the hole in the chassis earlier. That's obviously um, earlier those two other wires came through when she was on DC. They then come up and then they go on to the two sides of the motor there. So before we put um, everything back on, uh, before we put the bodies back on and everything, we'll very quickly give her a test uh, to see if she works. Then once we know she works, we can then put the body back on, uh, tidy everything up properly and then we can uh, give her a proper test. Okay, so she's on the track. I've got the decoder's uh, current address selected uh, because it has come out, come out of a previous loco um, and I haven't reprogrammed it yet. Um, that'll also be done later. Um, but anyway, we'll give her, give her a quick test. Um, now, if she does cut out, um, that's fair enough. Um, I think this track might, a little bit dirt, might be a little bit dirty. Plus, without her body on, obviously the body does weigh quite a bit with that weight inside. So she hasn't got as much weight pushing down on those driving wheels uh, to give um, as good of a connection. And I will give everything a really good, really good clean and before we run her properly. But anyway, let's give her a quick run back and forth to see she works. She does. Brilliant. So we, know, so we know she works. She's running uh, fairly well. Um, I will give the decoder a bit more programming later on. Um, once she's all had a good run and everything with the decoder. Um, to try and get everything a bit better. Obviously, it is a, a very cheap decoder, so it's not going to be the best performance in the world. But certainly for me, um, with how often I run this loco, it'll be perfectly fine. But anyway, um, I'll quickly get the bodies back on and everything, get everything tidied up, then we'll give her a proper test. Uh, very quickly, guys, just before we put the loco onto the track, um, one thing I've almost forgot about is inside the tender body, um, if I just bring the body in front of you, you can see this piece of plastic here. Um, I, I didn't actually realise that earlier. But this piece of plastic um, does have to come out um, because I've just realised, trying to put the tender body back on, that this piece is clashing with the decoder. Um, so you will need to remove this. Um, I'm quickly quickly just going to cut it out. Um, you can remove it however you want to. You might not need to remove it, remove it fully, um, but I try to recommend uh, re removing it as much as you can just to get it out of the way. Um, it's obviously just there just to give the decoder, um, give the decoder, give the tender some extra stability because obviously without the decoder there, this touches directly down onto those weights. Um, just again, gives the tender a bit more structure, um, but I would recommend removing it. Um, well, you're, you're gonna have to remove it, you don't have a choice, unfortunately. Um, unless you obviously uh, place everything around this uh, piece of plastic so it doesn't get in the way. Um, but certainly with the way I've done it, it is getting in the way. So I would recommend rem removing it if you can. Okay, so finally, here we are. As you can see, the loco is all back together. Everything's back where it should be. So all that we need to do now is give her one final run, I think. Uh, you can just about see the wires there uh, between the loco and tender. What I have done is just above where the wires come through through that hole in the chassis. And um, I have used a bit of black tack there just to secure the wires in place uh, so that if, um, when, when, well, basically whenever I take the loco off the track um, and I decouple the loco and tender, the wires aren't going to come, uh, uh, well, aren't going to come flying out uh, through that hole. So I don't, then don't have to worry about stuffing them all back in again. And next time I come to the run, run the loco, they should stay where they are, hopefully. Um, you don't have to do that if you don't want to, but I just find it probably a bit easier. Um, you don't want those wires uh, uh, basically getting longer um, any time. You don't want them catching on points or anything. Um, but everything should be fine where it is. Um, I've given the loco um, a new address, and I've also uh, basically programmed on my controller um, her actual running number there um, on the side of the loco. 
Um, it's not her actual address, by the way, it's just the number that the local comes up with. Uh, basically, when I choose her address, um, if we go over to the controller, you can see there it comes up with her running number there. Um, if you want to learn how to use the Hornby Elite, by the way, if you do use it, and you want to know more about how to use it and stuff, for example, how to bring up stuff like this, um, I could show you in the future if you want me to do a video on it. Um, but for now, um, well, I have to deal with it for the moment. But anyway, going back to the loco, let's give her some power and see how she runs. Go for 50% speed. And there we are, running very nicely. Obviously, first things first, it's quite noticeable if you've seen the review of this loco, and we ran her on DC, much quieter. Still not silent, but definitely a lot quieter, and that's one of the benefits of DCC as well. Most of the time, a loco will end up running a quieter, at least depending on what controller you're using on DC anyway. So certainly for me, with the DC controller that I use, as soon as I put a decoder in a loco, instantly it becomes a lot quieter. But yeah, she's running beautifully. Nice and smooth, nice and consistent, not cutting out at all. She's perfect. So hopefully you found this video useful. If you've got one of these logos and you want to DCC it, but you weren't too sure about going about it, Hopefully now this would have given you some more confidence and you can uh, hopefully go for it now if you want to. Or if you don't have one of these locos and you just uh, came to watch this video because uh, you thought you'd enjoy it, uh, I hope you have enjoyed it. And yeah, it's great. I certainly enjoyed uh, chipping her. It's nice to finally have a, a DCC fitted. And I'm sure she'll bring many years of useful service to come.